Hello, 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 sellers. Come on in. It's Kathy, and I love to be selling. And what we're going to talk about today is essentials for eBay selling. And the tips that I'm going to be sharing, the essentials for eBay selling, are good whether you're a new seller or a more experienced seller. They're also useful tips for you, no matter what category or niche, and niche, niche is sort of like, you know, the category that you are selling in. I know many of you sell soup to nuts, and that's why I'm pulling these together, because these are super, super helpful, no matter what category you're selling, no matter where you are in the United States or around the world. Hi, Sharon, how are you? So come on in and let's discuss the essentials for eBay selling. These tips are also useful because many of us source our inventory, get products to sell in a lot of different ways. So some of us are sourcing with thrift stores, some with consignment stores, some with yard sales, some garage sales or more bag sales, like at a church where you're filling things, you know, for the bag. Um, others are doing what is called retail arbitrage. And if you haven't heard that term, what it means is you're going into a brick and mortar store like a Macy's or a Nordstrom's, uh, a whatever brick and mortar store in your area. And it doesn't need to be a clothing store or department store. You can do retail arbitrage in a hardware store, sporting goods store, but you're going into a regular retail establishment and you're purchasing an item, Walmart, Target, and then you're reselling it on eBay you're flipping the item. That's called retail arbitrage. You can also do it online. Um, and if you haven't tried it, it's well worth trying, which is you go on to online sites like Walmart, Target, and you can certainly do it with eBay, um, also Poshmark, Macari, and you find items that you feel are underpriced that you could sell for more. Um, and this is true when you're a more experienced seller or if there's areas, collectibles, categories that you know very, very well. So you'll spot items that perhaps the seller is not aware of the value. Um, and you know, because you know all the details about it by looking at it, you go, aha, that's a whatever it is, that you'll be able to sell it for more. And then you buy it and you flip it. But the tips I'm going to share with you today are useful for when you are shopping in person. So you're at a thrift store, consignment store, yard sale, garage sale, or retail establishment of some kind. And don't forget those because oftentimes you can get some really, really good items in a regular brick and mortar store because they're running a killer sale. Um, this will happen to me in New York. It may not sell well in New York, but it will sell well other places. And wherever you are, whether you're in Kansas or Illinois or Texas or Florida, it may be an item that's not a big seller in your neighborhood or your town or your city, but it'll sell really well other places. So these are my tips for you. These are my essentials for eBay selling. Hi, Joan. How are you? Um, R, hang on a second. First, um, when you are loading up your carts, however you're shopping, whether you're carrying a bag with you, but particularly um, when you're in a thrift store or a store where they're giving you carts, like here in New York City in the various thrift stores, you get shopping carts, is when you're shopping, you might want to bring along, and I've got some props here, um, a bag. I've got my bag here. And as you're putting things into your cart, cover it. But you want to cover it with something where it's very obvious that it's not an item from the store or unless you want to use an item from the store. And then when you're done with your purchases, you'll put the item back or you'll buy it. But the reason, you know, when you're putting things in your cart, you may want to cover it is oftentimes what will happen is there's other avid thrifters and sellers and they'll start to look at what you have in your cart. Um, sometimes you'll get a fan and they're following you around um, to see what you're putting in your cart. And it just sort of helps to sort of calm them down and dissuade them from following you. It's just, just to put a blanket or a cover or something on your cart and put the things underneath so that people aren't like staring intently at everything that you're putting in your cart. Obviously, if you're in a retail store like a Macy's or a Nordstrom's, you don't want to be doing that um, because they're going to start to be suspicious about what you're up to. But particularly at thrift stores, yard sales, that kind of thing, it can be helpful. You know, when you're carrying the basket, you put the things in and then just cover it up so people aren't so interested in what you're getting. Um, when you go to yard sales and consignment stores, but also this is true for retail stores, it's really handy to have a tape measure with you. I have my handy eBay tape measure, 
Um, and the reason I bring this up for retail stores, because um, this has happened to me, is you'll be at like a Macy's. So I'm in New York City. We've got Macy's Herald Square that has really, really good clearance sections. Um, and sometimes Macy's Herald Square, because they're a flagship store, um, things that are on sale or clearance from other stores, they will bring into Macy's Herald Square. So it's a really good store to shop clearance. And depending on where you live, you might have stores like that where it's a flagship or it's like the center of a hub so that clearance items from many different stores are coming in there. And sometimes what will happen is the reason it's on sale, and it can be brand name, it can be Nike, Under Armour, you know, brands where you're going, yay, because it's super marked down. The reason it's super marked down is that it is mistagged. Okay, it's not a large, it's a small. It's not a small, it's a large. It's not a large, it's a double X. Um, one, your eye can tell you, you just sort of hold it up and look at it. That can be challenging if you don't know the brand super well, because some brands size larger, you know, than others. So Nike might size larger than Under Armour, um, than Hanes, than Fruit of the Loom. So one is know your brands. Two is hold it up and look at it. You know, and if it's something is size double X and it's like this, you know, it's tagged wrong. But it's also really helpful, and that's why I take a tape measure with me even when I'm going into retail stores, is just do a quick measurement because you'll, you'll get a really good idea. You're like, oh, this is really mistagged. So that, that way when you're doing the research, because, of course, you have your phone with you, and you're doing the research, even though it's tagged a large, it is not a large. And even though it's tagged a small, it's not a small or whatever size it is. So that can really help you. Also, if it's missing the size tag, okay, like sometimes um, it'll be a sample because um, I go to sample sales and they won't have the size tag in it for some reason because, it, because it's a sample. Again, the measuring is going to help you to know what the size is. So do that, particularly if you hold it up and it really looks off um, because when you're doing your research, Sometimes there can be a big price difference between what an XL will sell and what a 2XL sells for. And you want to know when you're making your decisions on purchasing. So no matter where you're shopping, you want to have one of these in your bag. Have a tape measure with you. It's really, really, really helpful. Okay. Um, the other thing is um, when you're at yard sales, um, and it depends on the thrift store, the ones that I shop at have plenty of shopping carts, but yours might not. And certainly with a yard sale, um, garage sales, that kind of thing, they don't. It can help to have a, a folding cart that you keep in your car and you can just pop that out and use it and, and to put things in. It makes it a lot easier than carrying, to, than carrying a bag. Okay, so a fold up cart, a bubble wrap. Bubble wrap is really helpful just to keep a roll on hand or pieces on hand. And this is because if you're buying things that are fragile um, and you think about this, so you're not putting the bubble wrap in the cart, you've got the bubble wrap in your car. And that way, when you are packing your car, you're going to pack the items so they don't break on the way home. For me here in the city, because everything is going on my back or my shoulder, I will have some cushioning, um, some bubble wrap some paper to cushion for when I'm buying fragile things so they get home because the stores don't always have it. So if you're somebody that loves to pick up bric-a-brac and fragile, you know, plates and glasses, be sure to have bubble wrap, a uh, newspaper in the trunk of your car so you can wrap the items to get home safely. Okay. So consider that boxes. And this will depend on how, how you want to set up your car. Some people like cardboard boxes. Some people like the folding totes. Some people have their cars set up. So the totes and the boxes and everything are there. And that way, when you come with your bag from the thrift store, the yard sale, the consignment store, they literally take the bag, they take the time before they go to the next sale and unpack and put things in the boxes. Perhaps you have one for plates, you know, one for bric-a-brac. Another way to do it too, especially if you're hitting multiple sales, is you're going to pad your fragile things and you might have like, you know, you're going to make four stops or five stops and you might have like the boxes to the right of the car, you know, they're going to be the first couple of stops and that you work your way around the car as you're making the different stops and feel free to put what you do, 
put it in the comments and let us know because we're all here to learn together. So everybody's different. Um, I do encourage you. Um, I know many of my um, sellers, you know, you're hitting multiple, you're hitting multiple stores, you're hitting multiple sales, you're hitting um, multiple events in a day. The temptation is also because you get tired. Uh, the temptation is to take the bag and just sort of throw it in the car. Um, that's fine if it's clothing. You know what I mean? It's fine if it's something that's not going to break. But if you're buying breakables of any kind, glassware, plates, bric-a-brac, do pad it before you do that. Otherwise, you're going to get home and you're going to have broken items and you don't want that because that's, you know, that's that's just not good. So don't do that. So take the time to pad the items as you're putting them into your car. Um, blue Ikea bags, one of my favorites. Hang on a second, because I've got mine here. I think I've got five or six of these. These are fabulous. I actually carry my mail in them too, or hubby does. Um, this goes on my shoulder. This is how I shop, is with blue Ikea bags. But these are great for when you're going to yard sales. Um, again, you could use it in a thrift store if it's going on your shoulder. You can put it into the cart. And that way you're putting everything into that. You're going to check out and then everything's going back in the Ikea bag. They hold a lot. So again, great for sales, great for the back of your car. Um, but blue Ikea bags are super. And so far I haven't had to pay for any of mine because oftentimes for the thrift stores that I go to, people put their donations in the blue Ikea bags. They're dropping the blue Ikea bags at the various thrift stores and the thrift store people know me and love me. Um, and they give me the empty IKEA bags because they take the donations out, you know, and they're processing them. So keep an eye out for blue IKEA bags. They are fabulous. And what I love with them too, by the way, this is the plug for IKEA bags. They have short handles and long handles, which I really like. So you can carry it this way with the handle, or you throw it over your shoulder. I typically throw mine over my shoulder. That's how I shop is with, I have three or four of them rolled up in my shoulder bag and then I take them out and I'm throwing things in my blue Ikea bag, but super helpful. Um, then one seller friend was saying they keep screwdriver. They actually have a full toolkit in the trunk of their car because when you're buying larger things, they'll use the screwdriver to break things down smaller um, to fit in their car, which I thought was a really good idea. Um, ah, take water and snacks. Another really good one for people with cars. Uh, obviously here in the city, I'm carrying a water bottle. I have one. Here's my, not an eBay one. I don't carry anything by the way that has an eBay logo. <laughs> when I'm going shopping, everything's plain. Um, but I'll have a water bottle in my bag because again, you don't know, you don't know what route you're going to be doing. You know, if you're going to be able to get beverage, good to carry some snacks, you know, whatever a healthy snack is for you. Because again, you might be going three, four, five, six, seven, eight hours. Um, and it's good just to have the snack. You can grab it as you're doing your shopping. Um, low denomination bills. Yes, 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 yes. Particularly with a lot of the yard sales, garage sales. You know, they're not set up to take <clears throat> you know, um, credit cards or debit cards or anything. So, And you don't want to be pulling... <laughs> You know, when you're when you're haggling for prices, you know, you don't want to be pulling out the 20 when you're trying to get it for five bucks. <laughs> so, yes, make sure you got plenty of low denomination bills. For me, shopping thrift stores and retail, it's always a credit card um, and a separate credit card that I use um, for my eBay selling business. So that's how I do that. Um, your phone. Absolutely. Um, and I do have the cha-ching sound turned off so that the phone doesn't cha-ching while I'm shopping. But every now and then it will go off because I forget to turn it off. Um, do, do, do. Oh, magnifying glass, really good one. Because again, sometimes to really look at jewelry or reading the fine print on some things, because you're trying to figure out a maker's mark on um, glassware or pottery or an appliance, you know, anything like that. And the other thing I found, in case you've never done this, phones are so handy. Um, if you look like you're going to take a picture with your phone, on my phone, I've got an iPhone. I can dial it so that it blows things up. So it will take whatever I'm looking at and I can do it like two, three times. I can enlarge it. So if you don't have a magnifying glass, you're like, oh, I didn't bring my magnifying glass. Try your phone in camera mode. Like you're going to take a picture of the item and blow it up and see if that works for you. And don't forget that your phone, most phones at least, have a flashlight or a light feature 
on it too, which you can use. So take a look at that. Um, hand sanitizer, a must. I mean, I always have it in my bag anyway, but particularly yard sales, consignment stores, but also retail stores. I mean, they can just, you know, you just get dirty. Um, you can't always find a ladies room or a men's room for my guys that are watching. And just to have the sanitizer, just to be able to wash my hands down, you know, after handling a lot of things, it's like, yes, yes, yes. Um, gloves, you know, the gloves fitting on and not just your warm gloves, but the gloves, particularly if you're like um, doing bins, but even if you're not doing bins, just again, thrift store, retail store, um, it just protects you. Sometimes there's sharp edges to things, um, particularly bins, you definitely want to do it. Um, but even thrift stores and stuff, I mean, you can reach on a shelf and sometimes there's broken glass because somebody broke something and they didn't really clean it up. So just be alert when you're in stores. And again, if you want to, you know, to wear the gloves while you're shopping is, is not a bad idea. Uh, dress in layers. That was me. Um, I don't know about you, but a lot of times I'm going in and out of stores or and I shop retail a lot is you go into one place, it's really hot for some reason. They've really turned the heat up, you know? So I dress in layers. So I'll have like a t-shirt, a sweater, my coat, hat, gloves. So, um, you know, I'll go into one store and it's like, I'm down to the t-shirt, <laughs> particularly in the summer, right? It gets hot, you guys. Um, but again, then I'll go into another store and it's a little chillier. So I always dress in layers because that way I'm comfortable. I don't want to stop shopping because I'm uncomfortable. I want to stop shopping because I've done great. I'm fabulous. And it's time to get home and get listings. So dressed in layers, it'll make it much easier for you as you're hitting yard sales, consignment stores, and retail stores. Don't forget outlet malls too. Uh, fanny pack. Yes, yes, yes. And that can be whether you're doing the bins, yard sale, thrift store, also retail. <clears throat> One is, it's just everything is there. Um, even when you've got a purse with a zip purse, it is on your shoulder. And when you're in your cart looking at things and you're on the shelf looking at things, I'm really not conscious about my purse. And this will also depend on where you shop and just how you feel about things. Um, I just feel safer with the fanny pack because it's here, my wallet and everything. Those of you with cars, I mean, I can lock my purse, you know, hide it under the front seat or whatever and take my fanny pack with me. Or you might just want to do a fanny pack. Again, it frees your hands, your wallet, your money, whatever is, is at your waist and your hands are free for shopping and doing whatever you need to do. So think about fanny packs. Um, jewelers loop. Yes, yes, yes. For those of you looking at jewelry, but again, it's really good for looking at um, maker's marks, um, which can be on dishes, pottery, porcelain, a lot of little things that you want to be able to take a close look at. Uh, stack of newspapers to wrap things in. Yes, yes, yes. So that's ideas just to get it going. Because what you want to think about when you're going out shopping, um, and I would rather be over-prepared than under-prepared. I'd rather have the tape measure with me and I don't need it, okay? I'd rather have that screwdriver with me if I tend to buy larger things. I don't here in the city because I just have the place to store it. But I'd rather have it there even if I only use it once a month because boy, that once a month, I've got it. So to have a little toolbox um, in your car, good. To think about the back of your car. And if you take the time, it only takes like 10 or 15 minutes to set it up before you go shopping. Because that way, when you come it out, you're putting things where you want them to go in a system that works for you. And that's the big thing. Because in your mind, if you can think how you shop, I know a lot of us are, are soup to nuts, but it's like I typically bring home mostly clothes or mostly bric-a-brac or a big variety. If you think about how you want to lay out the back of your car or for those of us that everything's going in the IKEA bag of how I want to place things, because that way when you come home, you've got the things in the totes, you've got the things in the IKEA bag. And you're pulling things out and bringing into whatever area where you put your un, unsorted inventory, you know, inventory before you're going to measure it and do your final research and everything. It makes everything go faster. If I can take 10 or 15 minutes to set up the back of the car or think through my show of how many IKEA bags I'm going to be carrying, when I get home, it makes the processing, the inventory, putting it away, 
putting it in the to be researched area much, much faster. And by thinking it through, taking those five or 10 minutes or 15 minutes to do that, it can save you half an hour, an hour or more when you go to process the inventory, which is I'm going to be doing my final research, taking my measurements and prepping it to list it. And that is gold for sellers. Give me back half an hour a day. Give me back 15 minutes a day. Give me back a couple hours a week. How many more listings could you get done with an extra hour a week? How many more listings can you get done with that extra half an hour? Or it means an extra half an hour with my family. And also you feel more in control. So many times when I talk to sellers, some of the frustration is, oh, I just, I just feel out of control. I feel overwhelmed. You know, I'm sourcing and I'm listing is how can I manage this better in a way that works for me? And everybody's going to be different. Some people are cardboard box people. Some people are folding tote people. Some are IKEA bag people. Um, everybody's different. Some people it's, they're wrapping right at the store. They won't even leave the store. They, they come in with the bubble wrap and everything. They're going to wrap it there and then take it to the car. Other people, the bubble wrap and the paper and everything is in the car and they're going to wrap it as they're putting it into the boxes and the bins. There's no right or wrong is what works for you. And one kind of store, like if you know this thrift store is really good and they really wrap everything, great, right? You won't need to. It's like, that store's bag, because I do have one thrift store like that. They really do wrap everything well. That store, I can take whatever amount I'm buying. That goes right in the box. And maybe I even want, I'm a big fan of labels. I even maybe have some labels in the back of the car. And I'm just going to slap right. I got my Sharpies. I'm a big Sharpie fan too. I'm going to write on it. Goodwill, Salvation Army, local church, whatever it is. And I'm going to throw those stickers right on the bag so I know those are the bags. Because you think you're going to remember when you get home. And if you're hitting four and five stores, you may not. So again, how can I make this easier for me? How can I save time getting out of the car? How can I save time bringing it into the house or your garage or your shed? You know, wherever the items are going before you list them. Because it's about what, that you have as much time that's yours and oftentimes just thinking through the process, you're going to save so much more time. And again, that's more time for shopping. Yay. More time for listing and more time for shipping. So you got it home and you're organizing it and you're getting ready. And you're going to want to put up the best listing possible so that you make the most money possible for your eBay listing and get it sold the fastest that you possibly can. And if you hop over to my website, I love to be selling.com. And when you get there, you are going to see this. And what you're going to look for is the thing at the top where it says free tips. And you're going to click free tips. Let me see if it comes through. Yes. And when you do, and certainly feel free to grab social media, but the one I was going to point you towards eBay listings that sell. This is the one I encourage you to grab. So you're going to get the stuff home. You're going to start processing your wonderful items that you've saved yourself at least 20 minutes to half an hour because you thought through how you want to put everything in your car and then grab eBay listings that sell. It's hot, hot, hot tips to get your items sold for the best price. It's absolutely free and just grab it. Um, Sharon says, I bring a magnifying glass with me too. Yes, it really helps. I mean, I've got pretty good eyesight, but same thing too. Sometimes you're tired and sometimes the print is just so darn small or I'm looking at the maker's mark and because it's a little blurred or because it's older or vintage, I can't quite tell and I just want to double check and take a look at it. Um, so it's a good thing. Manufacturer's country, is it Japan? Um, I, again, sometimes it's just a little blurry and I just want to make sure. Um, Goodwill bins need gloves, Joan says. Absolutely. Especially when you're doing bins, you really do. There's broken glass and things. You just want to protect yourself. Organizing the car will save me time, Ellen says. Yes, yes, yes. And again, just like Ellen said, listen, you take the time. It takes 10 or 15 minutes. And the other thing is organize it the way it works for you. This is where, you know, sometimes you listen to people and they're going, it, it, 
keep it simple. I'm very much from the school of keep it simple. You know, however it works for you. If it's three totes in the bag, five totes in the bag, if you're cardboard, if you like the folding pop-up totes, because you can just stack them up and then just open them as you need them, do what works for you. Try different things. I do. I, I just reorganized my inventory area because I said, you know what I want? I don't, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> I want, I want this stuff together and I want this stuff together. And I just took like half an hour and I reorganized it. I wanted to regroup some things. I like it so much better. Right. So when you get ideas like that, like, oh, I really, you know, this would work in the back. Just do it. it. Takes 10 minutes. And you know what? And the reason I reorganized it was it makes pulling it faster. And let me tell you, anytime you can save yourself time putting it into the car, pulling it out of the car, processing it, time, time, time. I get an extra half hour a week because I'm Ellen and I've organized the back of my car or I get an extra hour a week. Wow. An hour is a lot of time for an eBay seller. An hour is a lot of listings. An hour is your social media. An hour is taking my guide perfect listing and going through and doing some tweaking and getting some sales. Okay. So that's my gift to you. Please keep posting comments, things that work for you with how you organize the back of your car or you organize your shoulder bag or what you put in your fanny pack or in your purse that helps you when you're yard selling, yard selling, yard selling, thrifting, going to consignment, garage, church sales, and don't forget retail arbitrage. Okay, great. I'm Kathy and I love to be selling. Bye-bye everybody.